Are you excited about your Oscar nomination? <laughs> I, I mean, are you excited for that? <laughs> it's, it's coming, I'm calling it right now, and we're gonna play this clip back when he's nominated for an Oscar. My question also for you is there's scenes where you're like, I mean, your body is like, you're like shaking, and you're just vibrating. Are you having an out-of-body experience? Are you disassociated? I mean, I know it's your job, but still, this is not your normal gig. It's so hard to put into words. It's like, uh, it was, comp yeah, I mean, out-of-body experience is probably the way to describe those moments. Because you're not thinking at that point, you know? It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's really, I, I'm just, I feel so privileged. Yeah, you that freaking that should. got to be my life. Yeah, you, know? you nailed it, like you yeah. said. I gotta pinch myself. Can you just explain the situation, what's going on right now, Kelvin? Why, why are you, why are you standing like I that? I just wanted to show off my legs and, uh... Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm just, you know, in B.B. King style, you have to show the sex appeal. Right. There's something sexy about, and what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> you really got me. I, I'm just sitting here, man. I'm just, I'm just a guy in Listen, a shirt. I'm an actor, and I'm, 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 I'm feeding for some performance. <laughs> okay, but let, let's talk about it. Because when we think of B.B. King, we think of him in one way, but, like, there is, like, a sex appeal about him. There is, yes. like, a je ne sais quoi. Kind yes. of talk about that. I think it's just, like, listen, this is a man, <laughs> this is a man who has 14 kids and 12 wives. You know what I'm saying? Like... <laughs> he's been having some sex. He's been having some sex. What do you think was unique about Priscilla that she was the one for him? I think, you know, a lot of people looked at Elvis, but not a lot of people saw Elvis, and I think that she was one of, if not maybe the only person that truly saw him, you know, and looked into his eyes and saw his soul. What was your first conversation like with her? Were you nervous? Were you at work? Of course, <laughs> yes. I knew that she'd seen the film. She'd obviously said really nice things, which was great, but I think it's always strange, you know, I can't imagine what it's like to have lived a whole life and then, you know, some Australian girl is like coming on and playing you in a bezlem and really like putting on a wig and like wearing your clothes. Like, I, it's really strange. But she was honestly so kind and so open and very, very um, present, which was um, really pleasantly surprising. Wrapping this up, favorite Elvis song. Let's just wrap it up with that. What, what, I know it's changed probably, mm -hmm. but now what do you think? As you've learned to love Elvis and know Elvis, what's your favorite song now? It's still Hound Dog for me. Hound Dog is lit. Uh, I used to cover, I, well, I say I used to, I once covered A Little Less Conversation and it's like, you've got to do like the whole song in two different octaves. Do you want to sing a bar? Um, not in the morning. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Finally, will you just take us out with another pose? Oh, 100%. Yeah, I mean, yeah. listen, this is Mew Mew. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Mew Mew. Yeah. I'm wearing uh, some fashion today. <laughs> um, so all the people back home, just remember, Calvin Harrison Jr., B.B. King, Elvis movie, fashion icon. <laughs> That's a wrap here from Memphis. Be sure to check out Elvis, June 24th, only in theaters. <laughs> this is what I'm curious about, because you're clearly were possessed by the soul of Elvis Presley. You embodied everything that he did, and last night we were at a very special screening, and his daughter came up and she said, you nailed it, and you didn't make a caricature mm. of her father. So for you, in prepping for this, how did you make sure that this wasn't an impression and this wasn't a caricature? I, I feel so, uh, so much heaviness of emotion right now. You just even saying that uh, last night on stage, I was trying to compose myself as she was saying all those things because the entire time I, I didn't sleep for two years. I just, I was filled with excitement and joy, but also an immense amount of pressure. You feel such a responsibility, and it's, it's a responsibility to him and his life and the truth of his life. And at the core of it all is Lisa Marie and Priscilla. And, uh, and so I'm so moved by how they've responded to this, because that was my thing every day was, was, yes, there's the technical things. There's how he speaks and how he sings and how he moves. And, but all of that, if you just focus on those things, that's when it becomes an impersonation and a caricature. And so for me, it was, it was always getting down to his soul and just trying to find that. And for, for me, it was, you know, I don't work this way I, I, all the time, but for, for this, I, was, I knew that I was gonna feel like an imposter if I suddenly was on set and going from, hey, I'm Austin, and now I'm, I'm transitioning. And so for me, it was trying to create that 
and and feel that life all the time. So that way it was like a lateral movement into the scene, you know? And, and it, so for me, it was like, yeah, I just was living with it for those two years. Um, what is one thing you've learned about him or a few things you've learned about him that surprised you? Because we all know the myth, the man, the legend, but when you were doing yeah, research, what's... I mean, there were so many things. I didn't know he was a twin. I, you know, that, that really hit me because you, all the implications of that and, and realizing, and, and some of it you, you go, I, I don't know if he was ever consciously thinking about certain things, but for me, realizing that t to be in your mother's womb with your other half and then your other half being born but not being alive, your mother experiencing the most grief she's ever felt in her life, suddenly she goes into labor again and here you are. And from the moment that you're born, she holds on so tight because you're a miracle. And so you're a miracle, but you're also, your other half is constantly gone. So, so like that was one of those things that it hit me like, oh, he's constantly searching. And there's a void inside that, but then uh, on top of that, it's the fact that he was dirt poor. I never realized how poor he actually was. And when you go to Tupelo and you, and you spend time in, in the house that he was born in, and, you realize he didn't have running water, he didn't have a toilet inside, like, that's what he came from. And suddenly, in a couple years, he's the most famous man in the world, he's a millionaire, and he shot to stardom in a way nobody had ever been shot there before. And so there were there's so many things like that. I mean, yeah, I could go on and on. Final question, yeah. what is your relationship like with Elvis today? It, it feels like, I mean, I just, I feel so blessed that I, I have got to spend that time with him because it, it, at this point it's like, it feels like a best friend, you know, where if I'm feeling, uh, I, I get nervous going on a red carpet or what, any of those things, like, I, it's kind of like, I, I can go, all right, where are you? <laughs> and, then, and then it's kind of, it, it makes me feel, you know, I, I felt confidence through it. I felt, through uh, not through it, I felt confidence through him, you know, I, I, and he taught me so many things. Um, and his music, like, I, I, I will never get tired of it. And people would say while I was filming, oh, you're gonna be so tired of his music by the time you get done because it's all I listen to. And it couldn't be further from the truth. I listen to it uh, so much and it makes me incredibly happy. And so I, 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 we got a good relationship. Awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you, thank um, you so much, you, man. It was a work of art. Oh, I thank mean, you. you put up a piece of art. Oh, thank it was you so amazing. much, man. Yeah. Truly, thank Congratulations. You. Thank you guys thank you so, so much. much. Yeah, of course, thank you. All right, guys, now, I am a Jewish person, but last night, y'all took me to freaking church. <laughs> like, I, is, like, what, are you two possessed by the souls of the people you portrayed? Because it is so visceral from what I am watching on screen. Mm -hmm. I, I can't even, it's hard for me to make it out in words, and for you to play these icons, kind of talk to me about being possessed by their spirit. Oh, yeah, it was a place where you had no choice but to surrender to the energy, to the aura, to the essence that they brought, especially during that time in the 1950s, where everything is segregated, religion is so heavy, sexuality is in the air. You only had no choice but to bring it to Club Handy and set it off. That's yeah. the space where you're free. Like, yeah. So like Club Handy, the night that we're, the environment is, I'm the host, the Sister Rosette Tharp is the host. Yeah. And so like the idea is to create this space that you're free to tear your shirt open. You're yeah. free to just like give all of this sexual energy that in the 50s is like, you better tamp that down, sister. Like, <laughs> you know, it's really, it's really important to, to be able to find that. And you'll see me like, just like side eye Marie Knight and just be like, oh, hey baby, how are you? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like, I was like trying to give it like as much gay as I could muster while still being like really regal and stuff. Yeah. But like, it was important because she was queer. Yeah. I didn't yeah. want to miss that part of the story. Yeah. And so, yeah, like I grew up with Sister Rosetta and so like I was very familiar with her, but I think just getting a little bit of the human behind was like really an important role. Um. Talk to me about how Little Richard was kind of like a trailblazer because he is yeah. giving like queer energy. He's giving, I, I, I mean, you're performing, you're, you're literally like pulsating on a chair. You're, it's like coming <laughs> out of you. Talk to oh, me about yeah. him being the trailblazer and also that specific scene. 
Well, first of all, it's an honor to be paying homage and playing a trailblazer like him in the movie because this is where it all originated. When you think of Little Richard, you also think of Prince, Andre 3000, Childish mm -hmm. Gambino. Mm -hmm. um, these are all people that took essences from his book. And um, I think that's the reason why Little Richard was the way he was because he grew up in a house with 12 siblings, so he had to find ways to stand out just in his home and really authenticate every little detail from his hair to his makeup to his style. And I think he brought that to the stage, and that was so fun to be able to do. And I think that's really what made him stand out to Sister Rosetta, because a lot of people don't know that she discovered him yeah. when he was 14 in Macon. Um, she was doing a show, he was like just singing during rehearsal. She got a shot of him and was like, hey, Come up, here. Come up here, little baby. You know, you're good. Mm -hmm. And like, just seeing the way that he was, clearly there was something which her as a queer woman at that time, right. really like being like uh -huh. the mother exactly. hen of gays. Mm -hmm. Just like, yes. come to me, it's the same, I'll create the same space yep. in which you can blossom and be fabulous. So it's yeah. got like this sense of just like also the togetherness of the community mm -hmm. in the South as well, mm -hmm. which is a narrative that I don't think we like we don't we approach mm -hmm. certainly yeah. in the culture yeah. you know sure. and so that's like sure. a black caring gay narrative mm -hmm. that's big that's amazing. for that like, time period for that time period sure. it's mind blowing it's literally like <laughs> real, your brain's gonna explode yeah. it's so progressive yeah and it's such a long time ago yeah